Pleased now to welcome one CEO and founder, Chatri Sidyotong. A banging night of fights, Chatri. Who impressed you the most and whose defeat surprised you? Uh, I was most surprised by Rodrigo Morello submitting a two-time Sambo world champion. You know, I, I thought by far that Ruslan was going to roll through Rodrigo. I, I, that, that's what I was predicting. Um, when I saw how confident Ruslan was after, you know, sorry, um, after the uh, face-off, um, he said, I'm going to, I'm going to heel hook, um, uh, Rodrigo and that's especially his coach. They were super, super confident. Obviously, you know, a two-time, uh, uh, two-time Sambo world champion is, is obviously a submission master. So, um, yeah, I mean, I was shocked, shocked. We're going to go across to our media questions. Now we start with Ben Imperial from Sports Kida. Hello, Mr. Hi, sir. Um, can I ask um, the well, were you surprised by the uh, by the by the main event decision uh, by the main event result um, between the Petschmer Petschmer? No, no. I I had four rounds to one for uh, for uh, Tawan Chai. Uh, it was a closer fight than I thought, but I mean, uh, Tawan Chai won rounds one, two, three, and five. Uh, and it wasn't very close to his rounds. Yes, he was getting pitter-patter punched in the face, but if you look at uh, overall uh, in terms of, uh, you know, um, uh, significant strikes, to one Chai led every round. Except for what, one round, yeah. Yeah, thank that's you. How I, had I mean, that's how I had it. I don't know how the judges... I didn't see the judges' scorecards yet, so I have no idea. Yeah, thank you. Next up, a question comes in via text from Luisa Morales of Philippine Star, who asks, following the Lumpany announcement, one delivered an incredible night of kickboxing and Muay Thai bouts. What does it say about the excitement one will bring to the stadium in 2023? You know, this is going to be, I mean, obviously as a child, I, I went to Lumpini. Uh, my father uh, took me when I was nine years old. It's one of my favorite childhood memories. Um, and this is going to be the biggest audience that Lumpini has ever faced. Normally, uh, Lumpini fight nights, you know, will be broadcast in Thailand and that's it. And uh, we're going to be broadcast to all, with all of our broadcast partners around the world. And, and you know, we're going to have a, a, a Muay, we're going to have two cards every Friday. So one is a very Muay Thai specific card. And the other card is going to be a mini version of one. So you're going to see MMA, you're going to see grappling, you're going to see kickboxing, you're going to see Muay Thai. Um, so one is going to have an international flavor and the other one's going to have um, a, uh, a more Thai flavor. Um, and, and that Thai card will be broadcast live in Thailand only. Uh, whereas the international call we broadcast live around the world. So again, next year, we're going to do a minimum of 64 events. We actually have a little bit more, more than that planned. Um, a minimum of 64 events. And uh, so this would be a record high number of events for one next year. Um, I think this year we're going to do 22, if I'm not mistaken, around there, 22, 24 this year. Next up is Vincent Richards from Sports Kida. Vincent, your mic is open. All right. Um, hi, Mr. Chatfrey. Um, we just signed a new broadcasting deal with BN Sports. Um, how will this change the game for one championship, especially in the Middle East and in Northern no, no, Africa? No, no, no. This is massive. I, I, BN is, uh, you know, one of the largest broadcasters of sports. You know, in the last uh, few years, they've been the biggest payer of media rights for sports in general, all over the world, right, with, with, with their soccer especially. Um, and BN is going to be uh, broadcasting us live in 24 territories in the Middle East. Um, of course, you know, um, uh, Qatar Investment Authority, the Sovereign Wealth Fund of Qatar, the country of Qatar is a shareholder in one. Um, and, uh, you know, we are making a big push into the Middle East, but, um, you know, we want to we want to spread our wings all over the Middle East. Um, you know, I have been um, traveling to, uh, you know, all the various countries in the Middle East and and I see a, a ton of talent, but we've seen our numbers, you know, our organic numbers um, across digital social um, are exploding in the U.S., exploding in the Middle East, exploding in Latin America um, and, and, and Europe, actually. So uh, we're just seeing tremendous growth. And so, again, next year is going to be the biggest year in the history of the company. All right, um, Mr. Chatri, I have one, I have one more question. Um, global fans, the MMA fans are wondering when Roberto Soldich will make his debut and when will we, when will we see him inside the one circle? Uh, you are going to see we're going to announce it actually on on uh prime video too so on uh saturday morning singapore time friday night prime time in the u.s we will announce uh roberto soldich's debut and his opponent 
Um, so stay tuned because uh, it's going to be awesome. And obviously, Roberto is the hottest free agent um, in the last several years, and uh, it's going to be it's going to be an incredible barn burner of a fight. That's what I'll tell you. Thanks, Vince. We go now across to Nick Atkin of South China Morning Post. Hi, Nick. Hi, uh, Tawancha has just stepped in here, so I'll be brief. I'm still at the arena, but I just want to ask Chatri if you have any update about Superbon. Uh, he, he didn't come to the weigh-ins, and I heard he hadn't been medically cleared, and neither had Jamal Yusupov. Do you know if that title fight will still be on on Saturday? No, I I, uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to say, actually, but no, I'll just say it anyway. Superbon's fight is, he's pulled out. Uh, he uh, messaged me um, this afternoon, he's sick as a dog. Um and, and he just can't. And, and but he wants to fight uh, next month uh, in KL. Um, so most likely, subject to uh, the makeup bout that's going to happen. I think makeup bout is, if I'm not mistaken, is Tayfun uh, versus um, Shucks. I'm blanking here. Tayfun versus uh, on Saturday. Just too many things in my head. But anyways, Tayfun's fighting. Uh, oh, he's fighting Marat Gregorian on Saturday. Um, and, and the winner of that, I think, will uh, uh, fight Super Bowl next month. Or Chingiz, if, if Chingiz back is, is, is uh, uh, you know, uh, good. So we're going to offer the fight to Chingiz, who's the rightful title contender. But if Tayfun beats Marat, then I think that's also up for grabs or who knows, a Marat rematch. Super Bowl just messaged me. He really wants to fight next month, no matter what. Thanks, Nick. We're going to go across then to Jeffrey Hu. Jeffrey, your mic is open. The UFC also has been airing their some of their fights on, like, say, ABC, like, channel American channels that don't need, like, some sort of, like, paid subscription. Um, are, are you planning on doing something similar with one championship, as in having the fights, having the events broadcasted, like, on, like, a non-subscription, like, american channel like so right now amazon is our primary partner um obviously they have 200 million subscribers uh amazon prime and they are putting us obviously prime time on fridays at, you know at 8 p.m it's an it, it's a match made in heaven um but again i'm telling you it's the very beginning of the relationship um we do intend to have more events on ground in the u.s we do intend to have more prime time shows on air in the u.s um, i can't talk about all of our plans i can just tell you that 12 amazon prime video events right now is just the very very beginning of what we have planned for the u.s for one so we can't see more events we can't see more shows yeah i mean just yeah but i i mean we're we're in multiple discussions all the times and around the world um i think we're announcing a major broadcast a few major broadcast deals i think in the, in the coming weeks as well um not necessarily in the U.S., but, you know, around the world. Some exciting announcements. On that note, we have a question coming in via text from Tessa Jasmines of Business World, who asks, how long do you think it'll be before one elevates submission grappling to the same level of popularity as MMA? You know, I really truly, like I said, you know, for, um, one is the world's largest martial arts organization. We have obviously um, Muay Thai and kickboxing and mixed martial arts and submission grappling. We've done even boxing before, as you guys know, world title fights. Um, we've done Ludwig before. And for me, it's always about you, you know, growing our platform, the number of countries that are broadcast around the world, but number of events around the world that we're doing, right? Again, as at the minimum of 64 events, we'll probably do, again, our internal plans are higher than that, but I'll just, again, for public purposes, I'll just a minimum of 64. Um, so there's tons of opportunity for a, standalone grappling event you know um uh, you know but when we launched one super series we i think four years ago we launched one super series, maybe five years ago we had plans that it'd be number one in the world right in terms of striking and uh, it happened within i don't know 12 months we became the number one striking league in the world full stop right in terms of just uh, the level of talent world championship striking uh, for muay thai and for, and for kickboxing um and i fully expect to see that um, with grappling, we have the know-how. Our platform is really big, and we just know how to develop um, different martial arts and 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 showcase it to the world. So it's super exciting, um, and it comes down to you know values, heroes, and stories. At the end of the day, people watch 
as long as they're the best in the world, which as you guys know, I, I say over and over as a lifelong martial artist, you know, looking at a critical eye, my whole thing the last 10 years was to get the very best world championship martial arts on the planet on a single platform. And, I, and we have 170 athletes um, on our roster who have won world titles at the highest levels in the world um, across a plethora of martial arts. And no other global organization comes even close um, to the caliber of world championship talent on our roster. And so people want to watch the best in the world go at it. And, and whether it's mixed martial arts or whether it's kickboxing or Muay Thai or grappling or boxing, whatever it is, people want to see. As long as you tell the stories, as long as you, 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 you give people a reason to, to, to care. You know, one person might be fighting because his mom is dying of cancer and, and he, you know, wants to, he has to pay for everything. Or one might be because he's an orphan and he wants to build an orphanage, whatever the story is, you know. And, and that's the big difference between us and, and the other two major global organizations is we really try to write stories um, with authenticity of our heroes as opposed to, you know, pushing and shoving and insulting religions and, and, and um, hatred and anger and controversy just to sell a pay-per-view, right? That, that That's just not our MO. Our MO is let's talk, tell real stories that inspire entire countries that inspire the world. We're going to go back across the South China Morning Post with Nick Atkin. Hi, Nick. Yeah. Hey, can you hear me? Sorry. Yes, Nick, I can hear you. Oh, cool. Yeah, um, I just wanted to... Obviously, get your thoughts, Chatri, on um, there was some big news we had a couple weeks ago that uh, Eddie Alvarez had left the company and um, it was an amicable departure. Can you just give us any more information on, on why you guys decided to part ways and uh, what happened? You know, every relationship in life, you know, both sides have to win. And if both sides are not winning, then, you know, it, it makes sense to part ways and, 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 uh, you know, um, I really um, am grateful for Eddie for his time here. Um, and he's grateful as well. And, and again, I have a good relationship with him. Um, but I think both of us were caught by surprise with the pandemic. Um, it obviously delayed um, the U.S. launch of one into the U.S. Um, by at least two years. Right. So I think Eddie was. And, and so we were we were hoping that um, Eddie um, could help us in the U.S. and, and launch and whatnot. And, and uh, you know, um, I'd say, you know, Eddie realizes his, his clock is ticking. I think he's like 39, 39 years old or something like that. Yeah. Um, so, I, I, again, it's amicable. It was, it, it was just we, we, we both agreed that, uh, um, you know, we weren't getting what we wanted and Eddie wasn't getting what he wanted. So why um, continue the relationship, you know? Again, business relationship, right? Well, obviously, I, I have nothing but love and respect for Eddie. He's an incredible athlete, a legend of the sport. He is a an, an awesome human being. I have nothing but, uh, again, good things to say about Eddie. Cheers, Nick. Next up, it's SG Strike Sports. Your mic is open. I think he's on mute. Can we unmute SG Strike Sports? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. All right. I just want to know your thoughts on Seikit as a threat to Christian Lee after his performance and whether it will be deserving of a shot at the belt. You know, when I talked to Khabib, Khabib said this is his best 170-pounder uh, um, on, on the team at, at Eagles. Um, that Seikit is the best 170 uh, when we were signing him. And and I believe Khabib, you know, uh, he, he's a man of his word. Um, and, and that's why I signed uh, Seikit on, on the word of, uh, of Khabib. Um, but I also believe that Christian Lee is the best lightweight on the planet. Um, so I think if they ever meet, it's going to be a, a, an incredible, incredible all out war for the fans. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, let's see how everything unfolds, but I I'm excited. I'm excited at, at the potential. I do believe they'll probably end up meeting. I, I just don't see how they don't, but there's still a few more fights we got to make. Okay, thank you very much. Next question is via text from Sanuk Kun Wirasak, who asks, do you see Tawan Chai as an athlete who'll someday be as highly regarded as legends like Nong O and Rod Tang? Yeah, you know, I, I had a quick chat with Tawan Chai. He has a talent. He's a generational talent. 
He reminds me of Samat Pekarun, except he hits harder than Samat Pekarun, who's obviously regarded as the greatest of all time in Muay Thai. Um, he's faster. He moves uh, in similar ways, but he's much more powerful. Um, and he's just, he has unbelievable eyes. He can see things happen as they unfold way before they unfold. Um, so that's why he, he rarely gets hit, right, with a solid shot. Um, and so I talked to him just very briefly as he was walking out of the cage and, he, you know, he was thanking me. And I just said, hey, you know, you can become a legend if you just stay humble and you work hard. And he just said, yes, sure. I'm going to work really hard to defend this. And this is my dream. And, you know, um, I, I will be humble. So you never know how, you know, uh, I, you've seen this all over the world. You know, what the big money and fame does to an athlete, especially in combat sports, we've seen it over and over, right? Where you used to be the best, your hungry lion coming up, and then you make a, a lot of money and you become famous and you lose, you lose your way. Um, that might happen, but if Tawan Chai can stay focused, if he can stay hungry, um, I think when all is said and done, next five, ten years, he, he will be go down, go down as one of the greatest, if not the greatest of all time. Another text Here's question this time. Yeah, he has that talent. Our next question comes from Randolph Leongson of Spin.ph, who asks, Roman looked incredible, but now has to face the last man to beat him. How exciting does that make the final of the heavyweight Grand Prix with such an enticing storyline built in? Uh, it's going to be it's going to be awesome. Like, you know, I, I was shocked at, at how Roman just destroyed uh, Guto. Although I thought it was an early stoppage. You know, the funny thing is, I think the punch, um, Guto was basically out, unconscious so virtually. He barely gets up and he gets kicked in the head. It's a clean head kick, but that woke him up and he was ready to go again. You know, it's funny. The, um, just one of those things. And, and the ref stepped in. I, I thought the ref should have let it go because clearly Guto, had, he woke up. Um, but I think um, Roman versus Iraj is going to be uh, a barn burner. I, I just sense it. Uh, I think Roman is going to come in and, and try to do the same thing he did to, to uh, um, the same thing he did to Guto. I think Roman is going to come in and try to finish Iraj in, in one round. There's no doubt Roman is the greatest light heavyweight uh, striker on the planet now. Nobody can, you know, six foot seven, and he hits like a truck, he, and he moves well, and he, he just unbelievable. Beautiful night of martial arts. It all leads up very nicely to the weekend. What can fans expect from Prime Video 2? Like I said in the press conference, you know, it, it's going to be, I predict, bigger, badder, and bolder than anything. I think the finish rate is going to be insane off the charts. I'm super excited for the main event, you know, Anjali versus Jingnan. That, that is, well, you guys saw the first one, uh, first two fights. I think the third fight is going to be the same. It's going to be a barn burn back and forth, and somebody's going to finish in the fourth or fifth. That's what I predict. Um, it's a 50-50 fight, you know, because it, it, it's there's so many variables, but it's just like the, the first two were, were super close. Um, but I think, you know, um, the, the the card is stacked from top to bottom. You know, it, it's, yeah, it's just, uh, I, I'm super excited. I think tonight was an appetizer. The main course is going to be uh, Saturday morning, single more time, Friday night, prime time in the U.S. And the final question coming from Thai Media, MGR Online, Kun Neti Pong, who asks, any message on both Thai athletes, Pet Morikot and Tawan Chai? I love the fact that in one, you can have a five-round war literally from the very first second to the last second. This is what Muay Thai was 35, 40 years ago in, in the peak of Muay Thai. And we don't get to see that in Thailand anymore. And so I congratulate Ped Morakot and Tawan Chai for going all out for, for you know, 100% for all rounds um, and bringing back honor and glory uh, of the heydays of Muay Thai um, on the world's largest stage of martial arts. So I'm very grateful to both Ped Morakot and Tawan Chai they brought the heat. They brought the fire. They put 100% into their training camp. They gave everything they could in the fight. Um, and it was an absolute war. And I remember my phone was buzzing off the hook, you know. I mean, it was just ringing and ringing, uh, buzzing and buzzing from all my friends around the world who were watching in the Muay Thai community, um, saying it was the greatest fight they'd seen in, 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 in you know, decades. Uh, it was just an absolute war. So 
Uh, thank you, Pet Morocot. Thank you, Toan Chai, uh, for making history and for showing the, the world the beauty of Muay Thai. Beautiful fight. Fantastic way to round off the evening. Chattery, thanks for joining us. We look forward to Saturday. Thank you. See you guys.